Welcome back to our show, Empower Your Life. I am your host, Cindy Marie. Today, our next guest, I'll call her amazing woman, a change maker, a mother, a facilitator, a coach, and a mentor. She's passionate about empowering high performers or high performers to uncover and align their mission. Her mission is to make a difference in this world, to help us conquer our fears and transform our lives where we want to be, which we are going to cover on this episode. So I'm looking forward for you to get to know her further. So let me I introduce you to our next guest, Miss Monica Mascarenas. Hi, Monica. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking this part of the show. How are you doing? How are you feeling? <laughs> I'm feeling great, thank you. Yeah, beginning of the week, so. Awesome, yes, yes. So for those people, I wanna straight away ask you, for those people who don't know who is Monica, uh, how everything started and you know, how do you conquer or overcome your fears and transform your life where you are right now? So tell us your story. Hmm, thanks Cindy. So. I've been working for a long time to do away with my story. <laughs> and so uh, who I am right now is somebody who is very inspired, um, who is inspired by possibilities, who is inspired by the fact that I can make a change um, and who is really wanting to be love and light with whoever I come across in the world. So that's who I am really. Um, and if you want a little bit of a background about myself, um, I've been a facilitator and a coach professionally for about a decade. And before that, I was in public relations. Um, my mission for the last few years has been really to transform lives, to be able to uh, help other people who I come across, not only in my work, but also my children, my family, my friends, to be able to help them to get rid of these stories that they tell themselves about me and why I can't do something or how I'm superior or inferior to somebody um, to help them do away with those judgments and assumptions and just lead a very full, happy and uh, loving life. So that's who I am. Awesome. awesome. And uh, let's break it down for the, you know, conquer the fear and uh, transform lives we hear this this phrase uh fear of change and even in our year right now there's still a lot of people out there who's having a trouble or struggle of of overcoming the fear so as a coach as a mentor how would you able to to elaborate to us to shift their mindset of understanding the fear. So therefore these people or other people can slowly take actions to where they wanna be. So how would you think that they can change their understanding with fear? That's a topic that was really close to my heart, fear. I lived in fear for <laughs> most of my life. Um, so I'm very familiar with it. Um, and, and like I said, I was one who kind of came up with the story, the story of little old me. Um, mm -hmm. And there were boundaries that were made of fear. So it's, it's human nature to stay in the comfort zone. And so whatever stories we make up when we are somewhere in the you know, middle of high school to, to, to not look uncool, to be accepted, uh, to not face rejection, uh, we come up with the story about ourselves. So we see, okay, um, people like me being quiet, and so I'm going to be quiet. People don't like me being assertive, and so I'll be, you know, passive in certain ways. Or if I do this, I get a reward. If I don't do that, I get a reward. And so I've kind of formed this story about me right from the time I'm in high school. And like I said, the fear forms a boundary. So the moment I decide that I want to be able to be assertive, then suddenly that fear goes, oh, hang on a second. Do you remember when in school, when we were assertive, what happened? Do you want to really do that again? Do you want to keep yourself safe? Or do you want to go out into this unknown place where nobody knows what's going to happen to you? And then I'm like, oh, maybe not. I'll just stay and be passive, um, which then turns to passive aggression. And then my relationships are all over the place. But then because that fear kept the boundary of my comfort zone, of my story, mm -hmm. I stay within that. And so 
so that's how our reptilian brain is kind of programmed to keep us safe from perceived danger so back in the days when we were living in caves it was physical danger here it's perceived danger if i lead the boundaries of that story that i've created for myself so how how do i help people to move away from the fear by just seeing the stories that they're created about themselves right so when you ask people who are you they the whole of likes dislikes fears limitations that they have no concrete proof for it's just made up and so yes. i get them to see that um i get them to see that it's all just made up and then the only way to move past fear is by taking action so while mm-hmm. they would have insights in a coaching call um and they would come out of the call feeling rejuvenated energized whatever else it is it's not going to come to fruition unless they've actually taken action so for example i recently did a call um with a friend of mine who has a strange relationship with her mother and so the only way that you can actually decide that you have gone past these stories about you or these stories that how you've created her is when you actually make a conscious call or go and see her or have a conversation with her that's taking action and then you know whether you've moved past that fear or you're still stuck in that story of little old me that would you have like a powerful to start a question to to say to your client that it's all in your thought uh like how would you start a question with your client that it's all your thought because i think there will be a lot of people that yeah that's right but i think you know i don't know if i can do it like all of this self limiting beliefs all of this negative thoughts or set negative thoughts about ourselves i think this is mainly within us and when someone is telling you that it's within us but we don't believe that how would you still trying not trying but let them realize on their own that it's all on the man- mindset would there be any practice or or like tips that you would say how about this try this maybe it will mm. you have that kind of yeah so I try not to tell people but get them to realize it themselves. So one of the powerful questions that I ask them like you said is what are you assuming that is making you think this way? Mm-hmm. Right? Um the second question is what the evidence of that thought? What do you have of that thought? And then of course the final one is who would you be without that thought. So those are three questions that I would take them in sequence with for them to see that well it's just just thought. Awesome. So for viewers and listeners if you have self negative talk, limiting beliefs, take note of that three questions. What are you assuming and what's your proof and what's the other one? Who would you be without oh, that thought? Yes. Who would you be without that assumption or without that thought? I think that's super powerful because if we don't ask ourselves I think we always get a uh, trap with with that uh self-limiting beliefs and now since we are on the transition that we question ourselves on that powerful questions we want to take action therefore the next question I have with you is that transformation begins with commitment and i saw this one on one of your posts and i thought that that's super powerful i need to let monica elaborate that to our viewers and listeners so now we have clarity that it's all assumption it's 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 not real now how can we transition or shift people out there that's now starting to get you know um, aware I want to transform. But this powerful word, commitment, it's not easy to have. <laughs> so how would you say I mean not how would you say but what can you say what is your understanding about commitment and how would you think that people can slowly understand and be able to commit on themselves to where they want to be? That's a great question Cindy. Thank you. Um, <laughs> because a lot of people want to change they see the benefits of oh if i if i if 
if I just get got over my fears or my limiting beliefs, that's how who I could be. Mm-hmm. Um, but getting past that fear, which is just an, an uncomfortable emotion, is not something like you you can do easily because people actually feel like it's a threat to um, themselves, like a physical threat to themselves, and that's what they need to distinguish between: is it a physical threat, like am I going to completely disappear? Or is it a threat to the ego, which is a lot of what coaching is, to just expose the ego for what it is, which was otherwise hiding behind something. Um, the, the part about commitment really was something that got me on the journey of transformation. So for many years, I've been reading, you know, Eckhart Tolle and following spiritual, um, you know, um, people who kind of really lead transformation, but it wasn't strong enough so i was like oh that's nice to know oh if i could only be that way and um it was only when my desire to change became desire bigger than the desire to remain the same that's when i got really committed and that's when i said okay i have i want to be different i want to be that person that i envisioned myself to be and that took a lot of action to get over the fear to get over those boundaries so it took a lot of actually getting into uncomfortable conversations in getting out of my comfort zone and when you're really committed you take the action if you're not committed and you want to change you go oh nice but not doing that too uncomfortable so that's the difference between commitment and wanting to do something where you actually move past the fear uh, through action I, i love when you say that I want to change, but that's too uncomfortable. I I remember I have this conversation and I, you know, we're creating. And then uh, I ask her, okay, so this is this is your alternatives. And then understanding of having that idea is that you can potentially be there, but not expanding. What we can do is not something that I'm willing to do. Therefore, I don't think I'm committed that what I think I am committed. So so it's very interesting because um, I agree with you. Uh, I think we are already on on the wavelength, on the same wavelength that, you know, when we have strong desire, when we have strong why, bigger than ourselves, therefore, commitment is already there. And therefore it's i would say easier to take actions even though it it's beyond i mean it's outside your comfort zone and i think a lot of people going back to limiting beliefs of what people would say family friends and uh, colleagues and then uh, losing of friends losing of colleagues losing of uh, whatever and all of these things we have in our thoughts so i'm i'm pretty sure you also felt that way when you are on your transformation so if i can add question on that what is your super desire or super why that gave you the super commitment to do where to be where you are right now oh yeah absolutely if there is no why then there is no no GPA, right? So um, there's the story of this mystical island called Avalon, and it's basically um, an island that exists, but it's basically through. There's a lot of mist covering the island, so you can't actually see it from the mainland. Mm. And you just have to believe that it's there. And when you believe that it's there, and you move towards it, then the mist part, and then you can slowly start it. And that's, that's really about, that's really about the destination. And you just have to believe that an extraordinary life exists, even though you've not, you know, you've not lived it for a very long time. Mm-hmm. I actually, uh, so I'll come to my why in just a bit. Um, but for me, it was, I just wanted to live an extraordinary life. And I was doing a course uh, a few years ago, and I remember so clearly um, the host of that course talking and saying, most people don't even believe that they can live an extraordinary life. They just don't, they they can't even imagine it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
hmm, what if I just imagined that I could have an extraordinary life, then what? And so then he gave like these 12 different areas of your life, your health, your career, your spiritual life, your exercise, whatever, uh, money, family, friends. And he said, it's not just in one area of your life. It's not just in work or money, which is what everyone thinks that, you know, um, not everyone, but you know, most majority. a majority, like the way we've been conditioned is the only fulfilling thing in life is, and, and the, and the, and the, the gauge is really how much money are you making or how many, you know, that's how we were raised. A lot of us. Yeah. So we forget the rest of the pie. And for me, I wanted to live a full, rich, extraordinary life. That was my why. And when I say extraordinary life, it wasn't extravagant. It wasn't luxurious. It was just extraordinary. It was like where I felt the fullness of life. Yes. As Eckhart Tolle puts it, where I just felt alive every day instead of feeling angry or irritated or frustrated and I didn't even know why. So for, for me, that was my why. I just wanted to live an extraordinary life. But I was in a very different place when I had that as a why. And so once I actually put that GPS on and I started moving through those myths towards it, I felt so good that I realized that a lot of people around me who I always had living around me in terms of work and everyone and family and friends were still in a place that I was. Like a lot of things were frustrating them, where a lot of things were keeping them stuck. And so my why shifted from wanting to live an extraordinary life to helping others want to live an extraordinary life. So that's where, that's where my why is right now. Awesome. Uh, I think we can agree to say that I always have this question and I believe that you have this question as well to, to people you have speak, spoken with, whether friends, family or, or colleagues or clients that we have to to find out our strongest why and desire because if we do really have that irregardless of how difficult it is of course we will always question ourselves here and there but at the same time you will always wake up and stand up and say to yourself that this is my why i know it's difficult but let's get it on right so and uh in in what you said earlier that from understanding that you want to have a super extraordinary life again different people i mean everyone will have different uh, interpretation on that but you have always this core value of making a difference serving people and i think this is where you and i get to know now because we both want to serve people and this is fulfilling us and proceeding to to everything that's happening right now my next question to you is that there's this course that you mentioned to me the ACIM which is very relevant I believe to most of people right now or I would call it a course in miracles that's the the whole name so we you briefly mentioned that to me in our earlier discussion but I thought that I, I dig a little bit research as well. And then I thought that this is wonderful. A lot of people will question this. And that's the and that's the idea of that. It's really like questioning what you believe, right? So I want you to elaborate that and let everyone, the viewers and listeners understand what has this course helped you and why do you think it will be helpful as well for other people watching and he listening to us right now? Sure. Thanks. Thanks so much, Cindy. Um, so it, could I just speak to uh, something that you said a little earlier with regard Please. to the purpose and the why? Yes. Um, and you said that, you know, the common thing over here is that we want to serve people. We want to make a difference in somebody's life. I think in, li in the world, uh, no matter what your why is, if you haven't linked that with serving somebody, then no matter how big your why is, you will always have some sense of lack of fulfillment or a void. I agree. So whether you're a coach, you're a teacher, you're teaching dance, you're teaching 
you are uh, making products to help people feel better in terms of organic food, for example, or, um, you know, um, clothing that is um, sourced ethically uh, in terms of the materials, whatever you are doing, uh, are you running an airline, which is, you know, helping people, you know, move from one place to another and you are kind of helping people you're serving somebody in a better way. You're making somebody's life better in some way. Unless you're seeing that, no matter where in the world you are or what you're doing, there will always be a lack of fulfillment. Right? So, amen, right? So, amen to that. Sorry? I said amen to that. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> and that, that's what I see a lot with, with a lot of people who I coach, if they've really been able to link that to that higher purpose of serving somebody else, because we are all interconnected. We are all here, although it might seem like we're independent and we're doing things independently, we are here to make and enrich others' lives. And so mm -hmm. unless I see that I'm doing that, even if I'm a homemaker and I'm enriching the lives of my children, and my spouse and the people around me, I still see that as a purpose and I live an extraordinary life. Yes. It yes. doesn't mean that I should be, you know, a billionaire and I'm, I'm enriching everybody's life unless I've linked to that purpose. So, so yes, yeah, somewhere down the line, if, you know, if, if, if people haven't seen that link, then that's a link that they would want to make to be able to feel that's a big part of of the work that i do with people so coming back to your question of a course in miracles i was introduced to a course in miracles uh many many years ago by ekat uh, tole but i felt like i just needed to clear some blocks before i could see the world differently um and so so i did the course last year and i'm doing the course again and the Course in Miracles was literally, you know, sent to two professors in an American university and they kind of downloaded this in three volumes. So it's it's basically a course which is a student guide, a teacher's guide, and then um, a generic guide. And so what I do is the exercise. And what the word mean in the Course of Miracles is a shift in perception. In it basically tells us that whatever we are seeing in the world right now is is not the right way that we've been taught we've been taught to look through the world through the eyes of the ego um and so that's why we see things going wrong and something wrong with people and attack and everyone's attacking me or everyone else is attacking each other and we see war and attack and and you know uh, poverty and destruction and and so the course in miracles basically wipes that slate clean in terms of how we see and judge and assume things or people or places and circumstances so it wipes that clean first and then it gets you to see through the eyes of love basically that's that's who we are in essence um we were created by love and we are here to love and to spread love that's the higher purpose and so everything that you see which you're feeling like oh i should protect myself because like we said a little earlier that's the that's the main um basis of the ego to keep me safe uh, right from everyone so i'm just going to think of everything as an attack or so that's what fear is there for to defend yourself against all these illusions that you made up in your head which you know if you don't keep yourself safe you're going to be dead and so it basically gets you to see every circumstance as either a call for love so for example, if you're seeing someone, as we call, uh, you know, committing crime or um, behaving very aggressively or behaving violently, that's a call for love, right? They, they don't, they haven't uh, experienced love uh, in the past. And so they, they want someone to show them that, or it's a call yeah. to love. So if I look at someone, and I say, I really admire that person and I love the way she um, she's so free and she's so at peace. And so so basically, she's a little further down the journey than I am. And I and she's calling me to experience that love that she's already um, been able to feel and therefore spread it to other people. So that's how they the course basically helps you to reframe all the judgments and assumptions, thereby giving you peace. So that's the 
the end result of doing the course yes and uh i just want to add into that because i told you i've been listening and taking action of these activities uh she mentioned something that it's okay <laughs> of you fighting back with that idea of the that particular day of action because that's the purpose of it and you don't have to understand why you have to do that <laughs> because again our mind always setting us for protection because this is something uh different therefore our mind will will think of oh, what's happening oh no 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 that's not right and i i love she always reminds in this every episode that it's okay and don't do more than three to four five three to four five minutes because then the idea will be as not as powerful and again i think i don't know if you would agree nowadays a lot of people having the challenge of being in peace like just just relax just just slow down <laughs> just just be at peace like don't think anything just try to think nothing like just just be in the nature or just look at the things that you have at home and do, and do think nothing i think i don't know would you agree with that that nowadays a lot of people having a hard time to just not doing anything to to do nothing or to think nothing i'm i'm not sure. well both because in in work or career we always want to hustle we want to we, we want to show people that we're doing something and therefore we also think on and on and on and on but i believe that i mean i've learned this as well that we have to slow down we can give ourselves not to think anything and again that's going to this course that I, i i feel that it's very helpful because we are not fighting well we can say that we are also fighting for our assumption but also we're giving ourselves to relax and surrender yeah yeah absolutely so you're so right because it's I was coaching someone the other day and I said, "Well, what do you do in your spare time?" And he's like, mm. "I I I can't have spare time. I don't know what I do in that spare time." Right? And that's actually discretionary time, time to yourself, time to think, time to just be um is is really what I would now say is is the sign of an abundant, prosperous life that I can actually sit and do nothing and feel at peace. Because mm. that's what we call coming home. That's that feeling that we're trying to fill all the time by running and like you said hustling or ex- yes. over exercising or over eating or over shopping or over uh, surfing the net because I- i'm not sure what this uncomfortable feeling is and so i'm doing a whole lot of things or i'm rushing around the place because i'm not sure how i fill that up and yes. that what is that void it's that feeling of peace the feeling that everything's okay you know everything's yeah. fine and that's what you really call leading you know have leading life with the fullness of life um and so yeah so what what was your question again about the, the no i mean i i think i i think you would agree that there are a lot of people which you have already answered that uh it's a challenge right now for people to just slow down and you know just do nothing and be at peace because oh yeah right so mm-hmm. thank you for for sharing that again it is difficult i mean if somebody told me why don't you slow down why don't you just relax i'm going why don't you just relax like you can't just tell someone to relax it's not that simple and so for me i think the course in miracles made a lot of sense after i was being coached for a while because mm-hmm. we're so in absorbed in the way like you said of running all the time of doing something all the time we have no idea what it means to just be still and be happy and joyful in that stillness which is actually our true state where we are in the present we're constantly worrying about the past or the future uh, or feeling guilty or something like that so so uh, absolutely so yeah so this course is really a fast um the highway or you know the the speedy way to to peace to to show us that what we've been thinking is is all wrong what we've been thinking about what success is in life is actually all wrong and and 
just coming home to peace and feeling at home with being in yourself is is what it helps you to do yes yes and i wouldn't forget to ask you to recommend the book that could be relevant as well for other people that will find it very interesting to apply what is this book so they can understand the purpose of a course in miracles is that right so the book um is is really uh, interesting again and so the author of this book is somebody who actually did the course herself um mm. she was living again a life uh, which was really not something that she was very happy with uh, mm. and so she finally did the course she kind of looked at the books once and then she went course in miracles oh it has a lot of christian terminology so i don't want to <laughs> do that and then it just kind of came back to her to say um maybe this is something that i should do and then it, it not just turned her life around but she wrote this book which i find a, a big help to to doing the course of miracles just to understand you know where is it taking you so the book is called a return to love reflections on the principles of a course in miracles and her name is Ma- mary ann williamson so there's also a lot of talks by her on on youtube so you can mm-hmm. you know see her actually say what the essence of the book is but i found that very helpful to understand uh like you said it's a completely different view and so if you're just doing the course it can be very confusing sometimes uh so i also read the book by her awesome so just to remind everyone if you don't catch that well i'm going to put that on blog anyway but right now it's a return of love and also return. a miracle sorry it's a return to love Okay, sorry. A return to love and also the course name is a course in miracles that you can check out on YouTube. It's wonderful. In no excuse because it's only last the maximum duration that I can see is only 7 minutes I think. So it won't take much of your time and just really spend time and understanding deeply would be getting that book. So but I will add that on the blog anyway. So moving on so we're going to finishing this conversation and and one of my favorite question will be really to understand every individual with expertise like you as a mentor as a coach and as a f- facilitator not forgetting as a mom <laughs> so how do you f- keep yourself optimistic wow um i think <laughs> i think that shift came from the course in miracles where basically if i don't see a miracle in some thing that's happening no matter how challenging um it is what i perceive is challenging it's mm-hmm. to ask for help to see the miracle so a lot of the times we can be our best selves when everything's going fine yes it's when things don't go fine and when there are perceived challenges that i'm going you know all over the place and i lose my tempo and i lose my cool and so now i've consciously started asking myself well, what is the miracle here it's like one of the courses one of the lessons in the course of miracles um it talks about you know when she's explaining what it is it's it, like she says just like you said just do it don't question and it gives this um this example of you know maybe you're a mine a coal miner like you know down deep down below the oh. earth mm-hmm. and the mine collapses on you and because mm-hmm. people on the top have you know those those navigating systems and they know where the exits are and everything else they're going okay go right go left and you have no light you have no idea what you're talking about and at that point in time you don't question and say no i'm not going right i don't know what you're talking about i'm not going to listen to you right mm-hmm. and so i can't see the bigger picture mm-hmm. i can't see how that catastrophe that challenge that issue whatever i've made up about it could be good for me in that moment mm-hmm. and so if i can't see that and i consciously do that see what is the gift in this situation here what right. is the opportunity whether it's covid or whether it's whatever it is what is the opportunity in this situation and if i can't immediately see it then one of the prayers in the course of miracles is help me to see a miracle help me to change my perception or see things differently in this challenge and that's helped me immensely where 
that commit commitment to wanting to see an extraordinary life i love it like when you say help me to see the miracle and i also i think in another phrase of that is that help me to understand what does it serve me if yeah. people don't like the world the word miracle how does it serve me or how this situation can serve me and i think it's really true you know um when i in the position when i i'm always optimistic but of course <laughs> there's situations like what you said especially when things uh beyond or out of your plans or or something happen and this is really the test you know how can we really transition our thoughts into something helpful something into miracle and something that can serve us and it's it's unbelievable that when you mention that a course in miracles really helping you and guys if uh, you don't think that it will be helpful i challenge you to try this course in miracles because i'm trying it as well she told me to read this book i am going to read that so if you have any questions about that which where i'm going to proceed now to ask is that i'm definitely sure that you are learning so many things from uh, monica from uh, conquering your fears and how to transform your lives and also how this commitment will be also embodied in your brain and and soul for you to take action so i have question for you for those people for who really interested in to get to know you perhaps you have also like a one on one conversation at a time to to understand what really coaching what really you do as a coach where can they find you uh so i'm on linkedin i'm mm-hmm. on facebook so that's where they can find me um i go by the name monica mascarinos on both yeah awesome awesome so there you go everyone if you find that it resonates you you find that she has something to offer you more you find that you have more questions about what she is doing as a coach as a facilitator as a mentor check out her linkedin and check out her facebook with the name monica mascarenas it will be added on the blog on my blog definitely and my youtube as well and i have my last question for you is that what is your powerful message to share with our viewers and listeners right now anything it can be within what you're doing right now as a coach or facilitator or a mentor anything that you can help everyone i think it would be something that i said earlier to just believe in the fact that whatever life you're living right now and ex- and a more extraordinary life and a possibility for living a more extraordinary life exists you just have to have faith in that um and the question like cindy said earlier is to ask in any situation what is the opportunity here um and 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 the opportunity again is not according to conventional life as we know it which is material success mm-hmm. and money um it could be a catastrophic situation as we've been told to perceive it as and so the opportunity could be to be more present to be more to become more aware to become more conscious that could be the opportunity in a lot of circumstances um and that's again something the ego is really going to uh, rebel against <laughs> that's something that that's where we extend our possibilities to be on the box right so um, there could be people for example who have a child with autism and they go what is the opportunity here well the opportunity is that you become more present you see that there's more to life than just having expectations and having them all fulfilled everything that we see in the world today it has been orchestrated to be exactly the way it is so i think just having that in mind um and and to have a different perspective what is the miracle here that awesome. that is something that changed my oh my life. god that's <laughs> i don't know if you agree we talked about conquering uh, fear transforming into where we want to be and now we ended up with miracle how everything our perspective in life can really help us to see the miracles which 
again, I agree with you. And it's, it's really, really helpful and powerful. And I think a lot of people learn so many things right now. I think it's super, super useful because you and I would agree that a lot of people right now struggling in any aspect of their lives. It can be emotionally, it can be career, it can be family relationship and so on. And I think what you just mentioned, uh, having that consciousness, having that awareness, not easy, right? Not easy, but if we are willing to transform our lives, I think slowly, I love this, slowly but surely we'll get there. So. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Monica. It's It's been lovely to speak with you and you are sharing a lot of information with us about understanding the fear, transforming, taking action, and of course, the course of miracles and uh, how that also helped you to keep yourself optimistic. Thank you. Thank you so much. And everyone, don't forget, if you feel like you have more questions with Monica, feel free to message her or follow her Facebook or LinkedIn as well at Monica Mascarenas. And um, don't forget to share this uh, episode or this video as well. So our website will grow organically and we can continue of giving you the powerful or expect, uh, ex expertise like Monica that can provide useful and valuable information for you to take action. So stay on your track, stay on your game and you know, always believe with the possibilities. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you once again, Monica. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks, Indy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy that interview and I hope you find it inspiring and motivating. Remember, stay optimistic and keep taking action slowly but surely for your big dreams. Thank you once again and I'll see you on the next episode here at Empower Your Life.